I've played this song yesterday by the Beatles literally thousands of times and every single time I've always played the opening phrase like this. The note G going down to the note F. This is how it appears in every piece of sheet music I could find for it and it's how it's played in almost every single cover I could find. Yesterday 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 Yesterday. But the thing is, the first note of yesterday isn't a G. It's a slightly sharp F. Have a listen. Yesterday. Did you hear it? Here it is again. Yesterday. Still can't hear it? What if I slow it down? Yesterday. It's kind of hard to make it out, right? Well, if I take the isolated vocal of yesterday and put it into Melodyne, which is a piece of software that allows you to adjust and analyse melody, then we can see that the first note isn't a G, but a slightly sharp F. Yesterday. If this note was a G, it would sound like this. Yesterday. Let's compare those back to back. Yesterday. 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 And this isn't the only note in yesterday that people get wrong. This opening phrase actually appears four times across the song. Once at the very beginning. Yesterday. Once at the start of verse two. Suddenly. Once at the start of verse three. Yesterday. And once at the start of verse four. Yesterday. And if you look at the sheet music, all four of these occasions are notated the same way, G descending to F. But in reality, it's only the second and fourth occasions where Paul is actually singing a G going down to F. Like we've discussed already, on the first occasion at the start of the song, Paul is singing something closer to this. Yesterday. And on the third occasion, he's actually singing it like this, with an A going down to an F. Yesterday. So what's going on here? Why does the sheet music not show these details? And why do singers not sing it this way when they're covering yesterday? Well, here's my theory. Even though this phrase appears four times across the song, the occasions when it doesn't go G to F, so the first and third occasions, are quick and fleeting. So it is actually quite hard for our ear to latch on to the exact notes being sung. However, on the other two occasions, when the phrase is sung G descending to F, the phrase is sung far more slowly and clearly, giving us time to hear the exact pitches. So I think that when our ears can't quite make out the pitch of these two occasions, because they're so brief and fleeting, that our brain subconsciously fills in the gap with G descending to F, as that's what we've heard on the slower, clearer phrases. G descending to F is very close to the true notes of these phrases, so it's not a massive leap for our ear to make. It doesn't seem jarring or odd. Also, don't forget that even in officially published sheet music that you might get in a music book or download off the internet, the music wasn't written down by the songwriter themselves. Paul McCartney didn't sit down and write down how the melody goes for yesterday. This sheet music, like most sheet music, is written down by transcribers working for the publisher and they're not using any special tools to work out how the music goes, they're just using their ears. So mistakes can and do happen. Also, sometimes, if a transcriber's feeling a bit lazy, they might actually copy an existing piece of sheet music for the song. So if there's a mistake in that initial piece of music, then they're going to be copying that mistake and spreading it even further. Also though, sheet music isn't meant to be a 100% accurate representation of the original recording. After all, the purpose of sheet music is for musicians to perform the music, and it's sort of assumed that, to varying degrees, the performer will elaborate on and stylize the music that they're playing. If they didn't do this, and they snuck 100% to exactly what the sheet music was saying, performances would often sound robotic and flat, devoid of detail and nuance. Something that certainly adds to the confusion with yesterday is that if you actually asked Paul McCartney what is that first note you're singing in yesterday, I'm pretty sure he wouldn't give you a solid answer. And that's not just because he doesn't read or write sheet music, it's because across the years he's actually sung that opening phrase of yesterday 
differently. In the 60s, when the Beatles played Yesterday Live, Paul actually used to sing this opening phrase with a G going down to an F. For example, here in 1965, Yesterday. And here in 1966. Yesterday. But in later performances, like this one from 2004, Paul sings the opening phrase as it appeared on the original record. Yesterday. So why did Paul himself start singing the melody of Yesterday differently? Well, if you have a big imagination, you could suggest that this is part of the Paul is dead conspiracy theory that suggests that Paul McCartney actually died in a car crash in late 1966 and to this day has been replaced with a lookalike and that the false Paul or fool as people seem to like to call him learnt to sing yesterday by listening to the original record and that's why since 1967 Paul's been singing it differently. Or of course you could say that that's ridiculous and that it's actually fairly common for singers to start singing their melodies slightly differently. Anyone who's been to see one of their favourite artists live will know that even though you have got super used to the way the song is sung on the original record, that the song is actually sung a bit differently every time it's performed, and therefore there's not necessarily one version of the melody. When singers choose to cover a song, they are rarely if ever scrutinising each note of the original before they start singing. Artists just pick up their guitar or sit down at their piano and start singing it the way that they remember it. So inevitably, with each performance of Yesterday, whether it's Sir Paul himself singing it or another artist doing a cover, the melody will have small variations in it. Now that said, I did actually find two covers of Yesterday that do sing the opening phrase the same way as the original record. This live lounge version by Lewis Capaldi. Yesterday and this version by the Beatles tribute band, The Beats. Yesterday. Now, does it really matter that the opening note of Yesterday is often transcribed a tone away from where it should be? Of course not. It makes barely any difference to how the song sounds, and this is why nobody notices it. But it is interesting that even in official sheet music for one of the most well-known songs of all time, there can be a mistake in the very first bar. And it does show that even if you think you know one of the best songs of all time, that it's always worth having another listen. Is yesterday the best thing you wrote? I don't know that yesterday's the best thing I ever wrote. It was the flukiest thing I ever wrote. Because it was a dream and I just woke up and I had the melody in my head. Um, and it's, it's, it's done amazingly well. It's done better. It's been covered by... I think about 3,000 people have done it. I think so. it's the most recorded song it's ever. It's been very recorded. So... <laughs> <laughs> if you enjoyed this video, then do check out my recent Melodic Minor video, where I analyse how the melody of yesterday uses the Melodic Minor scale. And yes, in that video, I did use the correct transcription of yesterday. And of course, some of you guys noticed that, so well done for spotting that. And as always, thank you to everybody who supports me on Patreon, including the names you can see on screen now, and Andre Sainz Diaja, Andrew, Andrew Brown, Andy Deacon, Austin Barrett, Austin Russell, Bob McKinstry, Brittany Parker, Cameron Olivella, Chris Cabell, Christopher Ryan, Darren Harvey, David Lee Fish, Dr. Darren Wicks, Eleanor Skorchenko, S. Ben Hansen, Eugene Leroy, Eyes, F. D. Hodor, Gil Lamolatona, James Keo, J. A. Cockensparger, Joe Watson, Jonas Soderstrom, Justin Vigor, Lavender Mint Rose, Mark Height, Melody Composer Squared, Michael Vivian, Nancy Gillard, Paul Muller, Paul Paisel, Peter Dumphy, Piot Shmielowski, Roger Clay, Sam Lynn, Steve Daly, Sean Kennedy, Tim Beaker, Tim Payne, Toot, Vidad Flowers, and Vladimir Kodakov.